this was a complaint that was started by Captain. It was initially started by Captain Brown. Just okay. one box, okay? In today's video, you'll see an interview with a deputy who is the subject of an internal complaint. Before his 2019 conviction for misconduct, Deputy Will Lewis was involved in another departmental investigation. Um, that's entailing it. And it there, was, there was something else that tagged on to it. You understand, Gary? Um, I understand, Gary. Can't be anything criminal. Yep. Um, I got it right. It was sent to the sheriff. The sheriff sent it down to us. Um, this is this is something that's very very new to us, um, but we just want you know we got to get your side. It's uncomfortable, I know it is for both me and Laura, but all it's going to be is just getting your side of, of what these things are and then get you back out on the road. That's all there is. Sorry, I do like that. Yeah. Do you like that? Do I like it? Yeah. Not really. Really? That's more comfortable than all. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this is the one that, uh, I got this one approved, it's the same thing, so this was just, uh, uh, it's got goat skin on the inside of it, it doesn't put a warrant on people. I've actually got, I've developed a callus right there, mm -hmm. like, a, like, I could stick it with a needle right there. Yeah, oh, where it hits you. Yeah, where, where it hits me. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I mean. All right. Yeah, let's get it over with. Like I said, it's, it's uncomfortable both of us. What's up? I hope you understand that. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. 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 Various dates and oh, all she's, that. She's on the road. Um, I mean, it's just. I'll give that. Make the talk and give that to you. Um, the first one, like I said, is was brought to us by Captain Brown. It was initially just going to be taken care of by him, and then um, as it went up the ladder, they need us to look into it. Um, all right. Um, apparently Scotty Mendenhall was being interviewed and trying to get hired on at Anderson. Okay. Um, did you at some point speak to somebody in Anderson, a deputy or major? A major. And talk to them about Scotty? Mm -hmm. About his, I don't know if it was personal stuff or about work or, or what. No. Me on, on what happened with that thing. What happened is I got a call from, we were on, I don't remember what day it was, we were on third shift. And I remember where I was parked at. I was parked outside of Kingsgate Subdivision on Batesville Road. And I got a call uh, asking me from Stan Whitten, um, telling me Scotty was going to apply over in Anderson County. Initially, this is sounding like a complaint made by someone who has a personal grudge against Lewis. This person may believe, whether true or not, that Lewis cost them a job opportunity. Gary Bryant, he's a major, and uh, I called Gary and I said, um, man, this guy's coming over to apply for a job with y'all. And like I said, this was a request to stand with um, I said, man, I said, got a guy coming over here to apply with y'all. I said, his name is, uh, I said, I may have told him his name was Scott. I can't remember. I said, Stan uh, told you to call the major or something, or told, told Stan him? Said, <laughs> Stan said that he was going to call, or Stan said, asked me if I'd call over here and put in a word for Scotty, and that he was going to get in touch with Gary on Facebook, is what he said. I said to help him, Scott, he had a job. Yeah, that okay. was Scott. Okay. Um, Sam went into the story about how Scotty had just recently bought a house um, and that he was, uh, you know, he needed to pay for his house, whatever. I mean, you know, kind of a soft story. You know. 
So I called uh, I called Gary and I said, "Hey man, this, this guy's coming over uh, to apply for a job." I said, hey, "I'm sure I told him his name." Um, you know what he just called and said something out. And uh, I said, "He's a Citadel grad." I said, "He's got a couple of medals of valor." I said, "Distinguished service over here." I said, "And uh, I said he's not working for us anymore." I said, "He needs a job." And Gary said, "Okay, um, that's the case." And you know, obviously not working for you. I said. Man, I said, he left in short order. I said, that's all I did. I said, because at the time, I didn't know which guy he had fired, and I still went back. He was fired, resigned, quit. You know, I don't know what happened. Um, so at that point, that was the end of the conversation. We never talked about it again. Um, and then, you know, all this came up. So, that's pretty much it. Have you talked to any of your supervisors about this? Or did the captain talk to you? Yeah, captain, I, um, I told, I did tell Damon. I said I heard that there was somebody asking questions about some complaint this guy filed. I said that to Damon, but oh. that was pretty much the end of it. Because he's did current. you go into anything that you knew about what happened, about why he resigned or got fired or whatever? Because personally, I don't. I have no, I didn't. Because to be honest, to this date, I have. No idea if he was fired, resigned, quit. I still. But under the circumstance, I mean, do you know about the search or the whole incident of oh, yeah. why he got? Yeah. And was I, that mentioned? Did you discuss that at all with, with the major? Yeah. Nope. And the reason. Was did Scotty call you, or did he not get the job or something? I mean, how? What have you heard about that since then? No. Or have you not heard anything until? No. I mean, I, I the last thing you know just. People talking on the street. Uh, the last thing I heard was that Scotty had applied or was working in Charleston. Was moving back to Charleston was the last thing I heard. I mean, I don't know anything about the kid. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, is is Stan friends with him or something? I mean, is that how he knew that he was? Uh, yeah. I mean, the way I understand it, they're pretty tight. Oh, but you know, I don't, I don't run in that circle. I mean, I, we hadn't talked to Stan, so I don't. Mm -hmm. no, I don't run in that circle. So, just for the record, you didn't say anything negative about Scotty. No, I did not say anything negative about Scotty. I mean, those are those are. So your point in common was to assist him or help him get a job there. No. Or kind of. No. I wouldn't even get that far. Okay. My 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 point was to call over there because Stan asked me to call over there and talk to Gary. Okay. So I did. I didn't say. I did not ever at any point tell Gary that he was a great guy he needed to hire him. I didn't tell him he was a shit bag and needed to be needed not to be hired. I didn't tell him one way or another. Okay. So I wouldn't say that I called over there to get him a job either. I did what you know somebody asked me to do. Okay. So. Lewis is fairly neutral about his accuser, although the person he spoke with may have picked up something in his tone of voice. Still, it doesn't seem as if Lewis was trying to sabotage his chances. Who filed this complaint initially? Scotty. Scotty did. Um, and sorry, I'm just reviewing because obviously everything had to be put on hold for the shooting that happened Friday, so <laughs> it's been a few days since so. Um Have you talked back with the major at all after that? Did he call and tell you that Scotty complained or? The major had called me and asked me who Tim Brown was. Okay. He said, who's Tim Brown? And I said, well, he's captain over here. He called him Terrence. He said, who's Terrence Brown? I said, I don't know. I said, Tim Brown. And he said, okay. He said, well, he called and you know, wanted to know some questions about this guy. And I said, okay. That was it. He said, I don't. And he said, Gary said, I never even knew the guy apply. And I said, okay. And that was pretty much the extent of it. I mean, we talk quite frequently, but never, most of the time it's, hey, you talk to anybody, you going to the game this weekend, and how's Ethan, how's Megan, his kids, you know, we talk about anything. Just, just friends, I mean, just, you know, you gotta be good. I don't know, is Amy Ron or something? I should run. Yeah, the point is, I think when he filed this complaint, he was not hired by Anderson County. 
and apparently he got word that you'd made a phone call. So. Yeah. I'm sure you probably did get word that I made a phone call. I'm sure Stan probably did. Yeah. Because Stan called me and asked me. That's the only way that that is the only way that Scotty in the hole would have done that I called over to Hamilton County. There is, there is no other way because unless Scotty knows Gary, and I'm about 99.9% .9 sure that he does not, mm -hmm. then that's the only way that he would have known that I called over to Hamilton County okay. for him. That was their stand. So. Right. You got anything else on that? Okay. Um. The next. Sorry. That's fine. We're not trying to overload you here, Wood. We're just trying to cover it all at one time so you don't have to come back and see us again. No problem at all. Okay. Um, what's, tell me about this whole transferring thing to Echo and, oh and how this began, conversations with the sheriff, and all this, okay? Because apparently we've been told that you were transferring, but there was no personnel order, and that you're not being transferred, and all that. So it's the big, yeah. Yeah. you know. So come tell me from the from the beginning. I guess I'm assuming after it the Bravo was, shift mess, well, is when this began. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. And this right here is you may you may see. You may see a little fire in my eyes in this one because this is a little bit this is a little bit personal. Okay. Um, when I was at GTI, I got a text message from somebody from somebody on the road that said, "Hey man, we're glad you're coming over." Okay. Where am I coming? Mm -hmm. um, heard you. They announced in roll call today that you coming on our side of that game. Okay, great. And this is timeout just for a time frame. This is. Just after the Bravo crap was over with. I don't even know if it was over because I was at GTI. I have no idea what was going on. Okay. This is when I had to send you some something from, the other from something Porsche. from a year and a half from ago. From the older guy that did exactly. that. Yeah. Okay. This was at the same time period. So that's that's the same time period. So at the, when you left to go to that school, you're still on Bravo? When I left to go to that school, I was still on Bravo. Okay. Okay. I get to, uh, I get down there, I get, you know, hey, we're glad you're coming there. We're looking forward to you coming to Echo. Great. The phone service down there was horrible. Um, so it was probably that evening sometime uh, when I was able to actually get around to calling somebody. And I called uh, the captain and I said, uh, heard I've been transferred. Captain and he said, right. no, Captain East. Captain East. And I said, all right. He said, yeah, we're moving you to Echo temporarily until we can figure out what's going on. I said, all right, that's fine. We'll stop that part of the story right there. Okay. In February of this year, Doug Bortone and I started the process of trying to get me switched over to Echo. Amy's uh, school schedule, we knew it was coming. We, we knew ahead of time it was coming. The kids have been accepted into different schools, special schools. Um, we knew all of these issues were going to arise. The schools have become more demanding. We had advance notice that there was going to be some issues if she had the kids at school before a certain time or after a certain time. Okay. Um, so we kind of knew that this thing was, was coming. What's I talk, she's, a she's a teacher. I talked to uh, Lieutenant Portone about it and he said, all right, well, let's start the process. Um, he talked to Lieutenant uh, Ridgeway and I talked to Lieutenant Ridgeway. He said, well, come on, let's go talk to him now. So we got up and went to talk to Lieutenant Ridgeway. Ridgeway said, you know, we'll see what we can do. I'll put it out to my guys and see if anybody wants to transfer. Great. Nobody wanted to transfer off of Echo. That's fine. I said, well, you know, over the course of the next several months, I said, we, you know, whenever. I said, I'm giving you advance notice. I said, because August is when the school year is going to start. I said, so I'm going to need something in place by, by August. Okay, great. So he said, six, seven months notice, this is perfect time, we can do this. Lewis discusses his attempt to transfer to a different shift to accommodate his children's school schedule. It is fairly straightforward, so it is strange that there is so much confusion on the subject. This was obviously pre-whatever-the-hell-was-the-one-private. 
So I said, uh, so I said, man, I said that's fine. Time passed. Once you know, every couple of weeks, we try to work something out or whatever. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, I brought up the suggestion of I said, listen, I said, if, if it comes down to a point, I said, I'm going to need to be on a on, on that set schedule. I said, I, you know, I just swear, people, we can get you into investigations, or we can do this, or we can try. I said that schedule is not going to work for me. I said I need this where I'm guaranteed that I'm going to be off in the morning when the kids, you know, even if it's only for four hours sleep, four and a half hours sleep, I come home and take a nap. You know, as long as I can be there to make sure that the kids go somewhere and during the daytime if they're sick, I can stay home with them. Amy can split her class in the afternoon and still get a full day's work in. She's been there all day, so you know everything was kind of kind of in line there. I said, I'm going to be the investigations. I said, I need the echo hours. Mm -hmm. I said, if I need to, I said, I can take a voluntary demotion to do that. And he said, okay. We, uh, that process continued on. To my knowledge, nothing was ever put in paper. Nothing was ever put in writing. Um, he and I never, you know, we never signed anything or he never put anything down with a request or anything like that. Well, when I went to Echo, when I found out I was going to Echo when I was at GTI, I'm like, all right, well, something apparently worked. Somebody said something. Ridgeway stepped up. Something happened. I just assumed. I didn't say anything. All right. So I come back to work, uh, pick up an Echo car, had swiped that Tuesday because I was supposed to get to the Echo hours to work Wednesday, Thursday. I come back and I pick up an Echo car and I drive the Echo car. Um, while I'm driving the Echo car, I get a call at SWAT Tuesday afternoon when I was leaving the SWAT train. I guess it was probably 4 o'clock or so. I get a message from Dave. Give me a call. I said, all right. I called him. I said, what's up? He said, man, he said, I'm looking forward to you coming in tomorrow. I said, for what? He said, for Charlie. I said, the first time I heard about this. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you've been assigned to my platoon. Great. Okay. I said, well, I'm not going to be able to come in anymore. I said, because I was planning on working echo hours, so I have to be available to take care of whatever the situation is with the yeah. kids. He said, well, that's fine. Take them more off, and we'll talk about it on Thursday. And I said, all right. So I took that day off. Thursday, I came in and sat down and talked to him. I said, these are the situations, the ones that I just laid out for you. I said, this is where it all started. And I brought him up to speed to where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, baby said, we're going to work something out. We're going to make it happen. You know, we're going to see what we can do. Talked to Damon. Damon uh, talked to the captain. Um, I'm assuming that the captain talked to the major. I don't know for sure what happened after that. We all sat down and talked, and uh, I said, uh, you, you know, he said, you know, give me give me a couple of weeks here. We can we can work something out. So, okay. <clears throat> the captain sat down with him. He said, let's give it a couple more weeks until we get back to third shift. He said. I already know what's on your mind. I don't want you to take a voluntary demotion. That's not what I want you to do. And I was very specific. I said, give me a couple of years here. I said, I just need to, you know, with, with Case the way he is right now, he's, he, when I got back from GTI, it was obvious that he needed that at home. I mean, there was no question about that at all. Um, I had to beat him back in line for a couple of days, but he was fine. And then, you know, he's fine. So, you know, Allison um, was going through some things. Uh, Belle was, was pretty much on chemo. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's hard for a mom with three kids working full time to try to handle the kids and do everything. So I said, you know, I told the captain, I said, listen, I said, my legacy's not here. I said, it's at home. I said, when I, when I walk out the door, I said, nobody's going to remember me two weeks after I leave, whether it's as a major or a master deputy or a deputy. I said, but... You know, my family's going to know me forever. You know, we talked about it a little bit. And, you, know, I, you know, I raised kids. I know what it's like. Okay. I mean, that's fine. But, you know, I want my kids to remember my name. I want my kids to know who I am. Mm -hmm. So, a uh, couple of weeks went by. Nothing came up. Um, nothing was available. Damon Hubbard went and checked to make sure that all of the... Uh, that there was space available for me on that as a deputy. So the week before September the 5th, I turned in, and I think, I'm almost positive September the 5th is right. I've still got the letter in the car. Um, I think September 5th started a new paper year. 
He said, the week before September the 5th, I said, listen, I hate to do this, but. So I turned my letter in to Damon. He says, well, let's go talk to the captain. I said, all right. So we went and sat down with the captain. The letter about taking the, the demotion. voluntary demotion. Okay. The captain said, well, everything's already been approved. He said, you know, I've approved it. The major's approved it. He said, the sheriff's aware of it. And I said, okay, great. So I went to put, you know, I dropped my letter, and that was it. He said, when we were walking out the door, the captain said, I want you to know that, you know, this doesn't mean anything at all. I still expect for you to perform the way you were performing. I still expect you to train. This is not going to hinder you in the future. You know, if you want to try, if you want to test again later on down the line, when everything gets on the level, you can. They are still talking about Lewis's difficulties getting a transfer straightened out. Lewis was clearly frustrated by the event, and so far there is no real reason for why it occurred. So, I, uh, at September, it was the week before September 5th, and I'll tell you why I remember that day. Um, because the captain said, starting on, on Monday, which would be the 5th, um, you'll go to ECHO as a deputy team. So that's Captain, who's aware of this? Just give me a Captain East, Captain East, Hubber. And, and Lieutenant Hubbard were the only two at that point when we were in his office that had seen my letter. Okay. And they said that it had been approved above them. The captain said, you know, the major's aware, you know, every, this has been approved and all that. Okay. So the captain said, all right, well, I'll, I'm going to call down to Sally. Okay, I'm going to call down to Sally, and uh, I'll have the personnel work cut. Okay. I said, okay, great. So I walk out, and uh, the captain went way out, and the captain says, no, you know the sheriff's got an open-door policy. You want to go sit down and talk to him, you can. And I said, well, you know, it's not, if he's already approved it, I'm thinking, well, I might even, you know, I would, I mean, no offense. And to this point, sorry, but just, I just want to be clear. No, <laughs> to this point, point you haven't talked to the sheriff no, directly no. about any of this? No. Okay. And was this, when did you talk to Roll Call about saying that you were leaving? Is that, that you was, that, that was that morning when I turned in my letter. Uh, Damon Hubbard and I talked about it the day before, and he said, do you want me to say something, or do you want to say something? I said, no, I would rather address them and tell them that okay. this is what's going to happen. Okay. And he said, uh, I said, I want So that would have been before September 5th? Yeah, it would Like been. the day before, or the day that you spoke with Captain and... Exactly. That, okay. The that, same day. That, okay. that morning. Okay. Um, so I said, listen, guys, you know, as far as roll call went, listen, guys, I'm taking uh, a voluntary demotion to go back to ECHO for personal reasons. I appreciate everything. Y'all been great. Thanks. That was the extent. Mm -hmm. um, turned in my letter. Everything went down with the captain. Went down to... Uh, everything went down with the captain. And then Damon on the way out said, I said, what do you think? I said, do I need to go talk to the sheriff or just leave this alone? He said, I would go talk to the sheriff if I were you. It was great. So I go down and sit outside of his office. There's a couple people inside. I'm waiting. And then uh, he... He kind of he opens his, his front. He had his front door closed where Jackie's desk is, and the side door was open. A couple of people came in. They were talking about some stuff. And you know, he opened the door. He got up there and joined. He said, "Kind of what that means?" He said, "Hey, he said, what are you doing?" Yeah, and we kind of talked for a minute. You know, we started off joking about 1911s and wanted to because he was carrying that big cost cap. He's got yeah. a yeah. <laughs> And uh, he was toting that, and you know, he, he pulled it out, dropped the shit to me, you know, and I was taking like, that's my sweet. I fired it. I was talking about guns for a minute. I said, listen, I said, I want to talk to you about this voluntary motion. I said, I appreciate it. He said, explain to me the situation. So I did. I told him the same thing I told the captain, the same thing I told the lieutenant. He said, okay. He said, well, he said, can you hold off for me for a couple of days? Is this something that needs to be done ASAP? And I said, uh, no. I said, uh, I said, I said, well, I said, define ASAP. I said, what are you talking? He said, within the next two to three weeks. And I said, no, I said I can. Uh, I said I can roll back one one week with with Charlie to night shift, knowing it was going to be hard. And I said, but I can roll back one week on night shift with Charlie. I said that that's not going to be a problem. When a man says, "Hey, listen, I don't like the idea of you taking a voluntary demotion," and he's willing to let you keep your strike and maybe try to work something out for you, great. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. So I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. And he said, I got something in the works. He said, but I'm not I'm not willing to discuss it right now. And uh, 
he said, I'm just not going to talk about it. He said, but just give me a couple of weeks and let's see where we are. Okay, great. Um, I walk out of the office and I said, the captain is sending, I told him, I said, the captain's sending the personnel over down to Sally to be to be done. He said, tell him to hold off on that. I said, all right. So I go back up and I told him, I said, you know, the captain was on his way down to the back. Actually, and I said, the captain hold off on the personnel. And he was like, all right, yeah. So I get back in the car, I take off. Um, I told Lieutenant Hubbard the conversation. Um, the sheriff made a comment. He said, I will personally call you and tell you when I, when I find out something, when something is done. I said, okay, great. So that continues. A couple of weeks pass. I'm on third. A um, couple of weeks into third shift and hadn't heard from him. So I called him and left him a message. Or didn't leave him a message. I called him left a message from Jack. That's, you know, whatever that was. Jack or Sal, I can't remember what it was. That was there about a week later. So we're probably three weeks in the night shift at this point, maybe. Um, he calls me back, and it was in the afternoon. He said, well, uh, he, he, I, I was awake, but not up. Uh, I uh, answered the phone, and he said, well, this is locked. And so I said, yes, sir. He said, no, I'm sorry. I just got your message. He said, I was laying under a stack of papers. He said, uh, what can I do for you? I said, well, I was just calling to check and see if if anything had you know, come about. And he said, uh, yep. He said, uh, everything's going to be taken care of on Monday. He said, we're going to move. Or he said, I'll, I'll take. He said, your your situation will be resolved, and we'll have you where you need to be on the 17th of October. I, I said, he said, the new pay period is what he initially said. And I said, you mean Monday? And he said, no, not Monday. The following pay period, the 17th. And I said, okay. And just to let you know, I don't, I've never kept up with pay periods in 15 years. That's how I've been able to keep up with pay periods. Yeah. <laughs> the last couple of months. I don't know. <laughs> so. There have been a lot of promises made by Lewis's superiors, but very little follow through. It's no surprise that he is irritated. So he said, uh, he said on the 17th, I said, great. Well, Time out. did he say what he just said? Everything yeah. we came about the 17th. He, he said, he said he was going to, he said he was going to take care of everything. And then I would be where I need to be on the 17th or to be taken care of. And I would be where I need to be on the 17th. I may be paraphrasing. I don't know if that's a quote but something along those lines. I was under the impression that I would be wherever he wanted me to be put by the 17th. So never, echo because that's what you needed? Or? But never at any point did he ever say he was going to put me on Echo. Never at any point did anybody say that I would go to Echo. I asked to go to Echo, and we were trying to get me to Echo. And I'll let Lieutenant Hubbard tell you all of the stuff that he said about trying to get all the details he arranged about trying to get me over to Echo without me losing a strike. That's, I don't know what all he did, but he worked his ass off. Now you didn't carry the way, but if you could still keep your strike, that'd be great. That's exactly right. Okay. And that's exactly, that was that was my philosophy from the beginning. Okay. Um, if I can keep my strike, great, but I don't care. So, that, uh, that was the last thing that I was left with. I talked to Lieutenant Hubbard about it. We've been in touch with each other, you know, at least once a week at a minimum about this. The 17th started my week of SWAT school. The one week SWAT school that we had every year, which negotiators don't show up. They call them bass customers. Um, <laughs> so that started, that started our week of, of SWAT. While I was rolling off that weekend, I asked them on Knowing that I was working third shift, I asked on the week before, I said, would you mind letting me work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on echo hours so that I can kind of be somewhat acclimated to a day shift schedule when I start my week-long school that's on day shift? Um, the initial response was yes, and then they were like, no, because we're short of manpower. Okay, that's fine. The one reason I asked was because I didn't want to have to burn it all of Sunday. Yeah. to go to, to do it. That's didn't want to have to do that. So Monday or Friday, Saturday, I worked third. Sunday, uh, I was off Sunday night. Saturday night. So was the school here or did you have to travel? The school was here. Oh, okay. So you didn't have to drive anywhere. So no, 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 okay. no. I didn't have to drive anywhere. Okay. 
Um, the school was here. Saturday night, we go through whatever, and Sergeant Wayne um, tells me, he says, I'm going to need your car in the morning, and you need to drop your car off and whatever. He did an inspection on my shotgun, an inspection on my take a book. And then he uh, told me, he said, leave your car here in the morning. And I said, uh, okay. And I said, and I had told him prior to that, I think it was Friday night, may have been before that, that what the lieutenant and I had discussed about um, the sheriff saying that on the 17th, I would be told where I needed to be. Again, nobody ever said anything about that guy. Everybody assumed that guy. But you assumed that you were leaving Charlie's yet. But I assumed that I was leaving Charlie's yet. Okay. So he said, well, I need your car. Okay, great. Well, I'm like thinking to myself, what am I going to drive? But that's, that was neither here nor there. He said, you need to make arrangements to pick up an Echo car. And I said, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, knowing that no personnel order had been cut, knowing that nothing had been in writing, I said, all right. He said, you need to call Sergeant Silver and, and get a car. Well, pretty sure how this conversation was going to go with Sergeant Silver. So I made a point to make the phone call from a recording line, mm -hmm. which was the Adam platoon desk on the far end. Do you know what? What extension that what is? What day that would have been on? That would have been the Saturday night. That would have been the Saturday, so it would have been the 17th, 16th, 15th. That would have been the night of 15th. Okay. I made a call from that phone. I called Sergeant Silver, and I said, hey, listen, um, you know, they're asking me to turn my car in in the morning. I need a car. Why are they telling you to turn your car in? No person, no orders being cut. He and I had a conversation about it, and I said, listen, I said, Sergeant, I said, it, it's not a problem. I said, I will drive my personal truck to SWAT this week. It's not a problem. It's not an issue. I don't know where I'm going. Things just seem to keep going downhill for Lewis. People haven't been communicating like they should about his transfer, and it's leaving him completely in the dark about what is going on or what he needs to be doing. I was kind of, I was, and on a personal footnote here, I was kind of like, well, you know, it, it, it makes sense, but it's probably going to be easier for me to drop all my stuff off on Charlie because... If in the middle of the SWAT week, I find out where I'm going, then I've got to leave SWAT, come up here, pick up some stuff, change out some stuff, get some new stuff, try to catch up with the supervisor, and then roll back out. So it, it, it wasn't an issue for me. So I told him, I said, I'll drive my personal car. I'll drive my truck. It's not a problem. You're not driving your personal car to SWAT team training. I've got a car for you. Just pick up that car. Okay, great. And that's, again, that was the short version of that story. So I go and I pick up the Echo car Sunday night and I drive it for the week. They come out real fast. What about what time if we end up needing to pull that phone call? Um, oh, that would have been right after roll call. So it would have been... In your own night shift. Yeah, it would have been somewhere between 7 and 8. So, I mean, probably closer to 7.30, maybe sometime in that time frame. Okay. Um, so then I drive the Echo car all week. Now, the jokes have been immense. Where are you at this week? You know, and, and that's just, you know, that's just been the big joke. Where are you at? Where are you going? I don't know anything. Are you still an MD? Are you, you know, are you a deputy too? You know, so I've been playing along with them, cutting up with people, and they're just jokes. I didn't make any derogatory comments about anybody. I didn't say I'm an echo this week. I didn't say anything. Um... I had gotten wind that this was coming down the pipe the last week the, during the SWAT week, and uh, so I I called Lieutenant Hubbard and I said, "Have I ever at any point told you that I was going to Echo?" And he said, "No." He said, "As a matter of fact, we don't know where you're going. That's been the big thing the whole time." And I said, okay. I said, I just want to make sure that I never at any point, he said, we all assume that you're going to Echo because those are the hours that you need. He said, but, you know, nobody has ever told you where you're going and you have never told me where you're going. And I said, I just want to make sure that I didn't give the wrong impression or anything like that. And he's like, all right, yeah, that's it. Why? And I said, well, no, nothing to it. And then I told him, that's the day that I told him, hey, I got wind that men in all five 
and that was the day we had that conversation. Yeah. So that was it. Um, I came back Sunday afternoon. I got a call. They said, "Hey, uh, you're still on my platoon until further notice." I don't know whether that's three days, three months, three weeks, or three years, but you're still in my platoon until further notice. I said, okay. And who told you that? That was Lieutenant Hubbard, and he said, if you have any further questions, you can call me or you can talk to uh, Captain Brown. Okay. I said, okay. So as the week progressed, um, this week, when it's swatting on Tuesday, I heard that Wamsley was promoted on Monday. So I called... Um, the lieutenant, he didn't answer, so I called the captain to see what the deal was, and he said, uh, it's in the hands of the sheriff. And I knew by his tone of voice and the way that he was talking that this was shortly to come. So, I mean, I've been around for a minute. I know. <laughs> so, Did you, I said, okay. And this said, time, like when you thought you were going to take the demotion and all that, you talked to Roll Call. Because right. you thought you were going at the time. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. This time, being the 17th or that last Saturday or Friday or the few days but yeah. leading up to that, mm -hmm. after you talked to the sheriff or whatever, mm -hmm. did you t say to anybody on your shift or in roll call or anything, so and so is my last day on Charlie? Yeah, the know, I said it's that. been good working with you. I'm going echo. I didn't say anything in roll call, but I told a couple of guys. I, I said, "Listen, I said Monday's my last." I said, "So you know, a couple of guys. Hey, let's get some breakfast. Let's get do something." So, um, you know, we went and got a little breakfast Sunday morning. Hey, where are you going? You know, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going. You know, what side are you going to? I, I have I have no idea. Um, you know, when the whole sergeant thing came down um, with with Boyd getting demoted. Um, I went to talk to Ridgeway, not because I wanted to be promoted to sergeant, because right now is not a good time for me to be promoted to sergeant. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to talk to Ridgeway to see if you know what his thoughts were, if he was going to have anything available. Well, I'm glad you came to talk to me. Um, and you know, we talked briefly. And to be honest, I say briefly. It was not brief at all. Actually, it was about 15 or 20 minutes. But it was not. You know, he said, you know, I've talked to the sheriff about it, and, you know, this is, I'm not, let's make sure that we understand each other here. I'm not talking bad about anybody, but Ridgeway said, you know, I'm, I've asked for you and, and Mike Decker, both the sergeants, and they told me that Decker, Decker wasn't available because he's not finished his probation. And I said, okay, you know, I've heard that a thousand times. They continue to give Lewis the runaround and it's starting to feel like this might be a matter of internal politics rather than basic incompetence. Yeah, so I just kind of, you know, just kind of let that one go. Um, so, you know, I was like, well, you know, if something comes available, and that was it. Uh, he said, you know, he talked to the sheriff about it, and he didn't want me to take the motion, and the sheriff didn't want me to take the motion, and that was pretty much the extent of the conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that was pretty much it. Um, you know, I talked to a couple of guys. That Saturday night, and told them that I wasn't, you know, that I probably wouldn't be back after the 17th. And then, you know, again, I appreciated it. Um, you know who you talked to? Or who you, we had, anybody you remember talking We had to? all talked about going to breakfast. Um, but we got really busy that night. The whole, what, where the west, just the west side. Just the west side. Uh, the, the, we had talked, we'd all talked about going to breakfast. Um, but I ended up late. Calmon ended up late. A couple other guys ended up high on the call up in 10. Um, That's right, that was my time to get off. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it was, <laughs> I mean, that was pretty much it. So, I mean, we were all kind of a scattered bunch. I sent out a message off the MDT, hey guys, you know, we're not going to be able to make it this morning late, you know, whatever. Thanks for everything. And that was it. Yeah, I appreciate it anyway. Um, a couple of guys didn't get the message, and I got a phone call about, you know, yeah. 7.45. Hey, uh, we're sitting over here. Where are you? I'm like, oh, uh, I'm on the way, guys. So, you know, I'll go there and, and type my page out from there. Uh, you know, and uh, sat there with her being. Let me guess. The hen house? Yeah, that's good stuff. With our hop and we able bit and uh, oh, you know, no, 
and we talked, and uh, and that was it. And you know, we just. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I think one question was brought up, where are you going? And I, my response was, Man, I have no idea. Um, well, and like I said, the following week is when I got wounded and everything. And then I came back, drove the Echo car for a week, um, jumped in a Charlie car, and that's been where I've been. They moved me to the east side because there was some apparent uh, personal, uh, you know, Conflict between me and Sergeant Lane. Um, What's the deal with that? I mean, was there an issue about this whole swapping car thing? Did it get to be a thief about it? Or I had no I had no tip. Um, I, I mean, no, I, there wasn't a tip with me. I mean, whatever you know, Sergeant Silver made uh, some comments on the phone that were not in any way insubordinate. Uh, he just said, well, listen, he said, if that's going to be a problem, I'll call Lieutenant Hubbard on his vacation. I'll call my lieutenant. We'll figure out what the deal is. And then finally... The problem like, about Lane taking the car from you mm -hmm. and you not having that vehicle. Yeah. Okay. And then, but that, there was no... What uh, reason did, did he give you a reason as to why you needed to get ready for call right then? Sergeant Lane? Uh-huh. And I don't, I, I, Sergeant, I do not ask questions of Sergeant Lane and whatever he says, I just you know, either go along with it or... You know, try to handle it by whatever means are necessary. You know, and, you know, his personality and my personality are not. Uh, you know, just just don't you know, I mean, it's not. It's nothing personal against him. He's he's been around for a long time. He's a great guy. Um, you know, but I mean, that's that's Sergeant Lane, and, and you know, it's just a personality conflict. Yeah. Um, so you know, I don't know any history between the whole room. We, we don't we don't have history. There's there, history or there's not there's not history. Some there's, people's personalities just don't gel. You know, and we all, know that but all these people at the sheriff's office, everybody's not gonna get along. <laughs> It is almost inevitable for there to be personality conflicts in the workplace. Most of the time, people are able to manage it professionally. Sometimes, however, it can spill over into petty actions, such as what is happening to Lewis. Be buddies outside of here, rather. And that's it. I mean, this is, that's just a personality <laughs> conflict between the two of us. I was going to get along and do our jobs together, and we're done. I think Lieutenant Hubbard recognized it and moved me to the east side. So, why? What's the, why we're on that subject? Okay. What's the, and I know you because I worked with you, and I know that, like today, the freaking boots are always shiny. Sorry. <laughs> you, you're always in line with everything. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, when we started looking at this, pulling stuff up on your records and stuff, the, the deal about your car not being serviced or the shotgun being dirty and all that. Yes, I right. wanted to know just. Shot, yeah. Is everything good? Or are you just stressed? Because you know, I think you remember when I asked you if everything was okay. Remember when I saw you down in front there? Mm -hmm. And I was just making sure there wasn't something else going on that's, I mean, is there something going on or is it just stress from this whole thing? I'm just not happy at all. Okay. You want to know the honest to God truth? I'll just tell you flat out on my head. I mean, because I don't get in your home business, but is that home my or is wife, it here? My wife is perfect. And there is there are no issues inside 100 Mercer Drive. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got you know my house. <laughs> I'm glad. I, and my house you know, I just want to make sure you were okay because that, that, I know that's not you. That no, it's not. And that's and, why I wondered and, what was wrong. That is. Uh, Just not happy with the things here right now. I know. I, I, okay. Well, you want the flat out truth? I'll tell you the flat out truth. I got railroaded, period. If you don't talk about anything at all, people will make up their own shit. I choose to keep my mouth shut about it in Mendenhall. I keep my mouth shut about whatever's going on with Bravo. You don't say anything, and people are going to talk shit. Eventually, people are going to start listening to what's being talked. And I'm tired of getting the sideways look that I'm the cause or reason of Bravo platoons. The whole investigation. That's what was said. Uh -huh. That I was the cause. Then it got out that I was the one who spread the rumors about Cheryl Cromartie and Billy Brewer. Okay. That whole thing came out that I spread all these That's bullshit. That is not true. That is not what happened. I can tell you where it started. I can tell you how it started. I can tell you how it ended up. And I can probably tell you who spread that rumor. But it was not me. 
but when my face is not present, they're going to point a finger at me. So nobody has taken any of this into consideration. Nobody has stepped back and punted. Nobody has looked at it and go, you know, yeah, I'll say it. I'm going to blow my own horn for a minute. Nobody has stepped up and said, you know what, Will fucking took control of Bravo when Bravo needed somebody to take control of it. I didn't mess with the west side. I didn't mess with the south end. I took care of the guys on my side of town. Period. Because nobody else would step up. Where'd you work from, Bravo? East East side. side. Nobody else would step up and do it. There was no sergeant. There was no lieutenant. And nobody gave a shit about us over there. Complaints were filed. Statements were made. Things were written. They all just magically disappeared and vanished. Nobody fucking knows where they went. But at the end of the whole thing, I'm labeled the troublemaker. I'm the one with the problem. I'm the one that gets transferred. That's bullshit. Did you ask to leave Bravo? No. Oh, the only okay. time I asked to leave Bravo was when I asked to go to Echo. Right. If you if they had left me on Bravo, I'd have been fine. See, I didn't, you know, I came in here after the, at the very end of the Bravo thing, so I didn't have any knowledge of all that I didn't ask to leave Bravo stuff. platoon. They asked me to leave Bravo platoon. What do you mean they? They moved me. They moved me to Echo while I was gone. So, yeah, I think it's bullshit. I think I got railroaded, and it pisses me off. As far as the complaint goes with Richard Wayne, personal opinion. I don't have anything to back this up. And this Richard Wayne didn't make a complaint. Well, I was just asking just because, you know, when we start doing an investigation, I pull your file up. Well, as far as my write-up goes with Richard Lane, that whole thing, when I picked that car up, it was out of service when I picked it up. The day I picked it up, it was out of service. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, when I go over to the 32 and get into a car, I don't look up at the sticker. Fault me for it if you need to. That's fine. But I didn't look up at the sticker. Two or three days later, we do an inspection. He looks up and says, did you know your car was out of service? He, he obviously knew that the car was out of service because he turned around and looked at me and said, did you know your car was out of service? I said, no. He said, you need to get taken care of. Okay, great. There was like a blue light out of the deck. Mm -hmm. There was like one blue light out of the deck. He said, you need to get that taken care of. Over the course of the next couple of days, between school, my wife, and my kids, and work. Lewis accurately describes how workplace rumors spread and affect people. And everything about this situation lines up with this being the case. Because I failed to put that part in there. I'm back to being a full-time student now. Uh, so all of these things combined, yeah. What you going to for? Study your religion. Um, and psychology and liberty. So it's been, it's been just one thing after another. And I'm, I'm keeping my house. Afraid. I just wanted to make sure. So, well, well obviously that right your up, home thing is bullshit. But your home, I just wanted to make that's your business. But I just want to make sure you were good because I know. And I straight told him no that I said that's not will. I said, uh, Will's always got his stuff put together and, and you know. Willie really had. No. I know. Willie really had. I know. Know. But I just wanted to make sure that, um, or see if there was anything that. In this right here, while we on the topic. make it better. And while we on the topic, this right here is mm -hmm. bullshit. This shouldn't even be an investigation. This is something that should be taken care of by somebody else. You know what? The dude, whoop. Well, can y'all even tell me? Was he fired? Was he? Did he resign? What was that? Mendenhall County? I don't know. I wasn't here when he did that. All that happened. I think he resigned. I think he. I think he resigned. Tried to come back, and then they told him that wasn't a good idea. It's because it was like he. And this is just from memory. I'd have to look it up. Was that Tina's case, or was that yours? Uh, that was Tina's. <laughs> That was Tina's. I don't, that was before I was down here, so I don't know. That's some, I mean, that's some bullshit. But I think he, I thought I heard that he resigned. Because uh -huh. I remember him, because we talked about this later, I remember him coming in the office, like wearing a suit and like a coat and tie or something, mm -hmm. and he was upstairs. Mm -hmm. And this was after everything was said and done. Because I remember thinking, what's he doing up here in a coat and tie? And the sheriff wasn't here, and so he went and saw the chief. Is, is the last thing I heard about it. But then, you know, I was I was friends with him on Facebook, so right after that I just didn't feel comfortable. So I took him off my Facebook page. But the last thing I saw was that he wasn't going to be in law enforcement anymore, that he was heading to Charleston for something. 
Let's do something totally different. I mean, you know, so... I was wondering if you said you heard you bought a house. You know how you bought a house when you didn't have a job in the moment? I mean, this, this kid, I mean, you know, I don't know anything about it. The times, he and I, he and I didn't, didn't necessarily get along, but we weren't, we weren't, it's not like we hated each other, but he and I just, he did things, you, you do this job long enough, you can pick out the ones who are a little bit questionable. People don't pop up with ounces and ounces of meth on cases like that and that and that from a red with a, oh I stumbled across this. Shit doesn't happen. I mean his paperwork's fucked up. Everything else is, is jacked up as a nine out nanny goat. No. You you tend <laughs> Yeah, nine out nanny But you you see these things. I mean you, you, you yeah. can kind of pick these things up and even though you can't put a finger on what the problem is, and the way I got brought into all this shit was that the guy that was working on my side of town was present when he did whatever he did on the south end. He calls me and tells me this. He said, man, I got something I need to tell you. He calls me and tells me the story. And I said, you got two options. I said, number one, I said, you can keep it to yourself. I said, number two, I said, you can go talk to a sergeant. Buddy. I said, those are your two options. I said, but option A, I said, if you keep it to yourself, I said, I'm going to be the one to go talk to a sergeant. Buddy. I said, because you've put me in it. I said, and now if something happens and I know about it, I'm in as much trouble as he is. Yeah. I said, and be prepared to reap what happens if I go talk. I said, because you're the one that's going to get the, get bet too. So later on that morning, he goes in and does whatever he has to do. After that, that was it. They never called me and asked me any questions. They never brought me in and talked to me about it. They, Brian wanted to talk to me about it, but I didn't want to talk to him about it. So I didn't. That was the end of it. Yeah. Um, you know, so this kid, and I've heard, and I've been here for weeks now, that this kid, and I think the last thing was, I will pay for what I did him. That was said. Who said that? And I'll keep that in line until all this happens. I'm not sure if you ask me. No. When he does, he can ask me. Who uh, will pay something? I will, but I, I have got, I have turned down two jobs in the last six weeks. I mean, we talked about that too. And I, let me tell you something about why did I tell, I didn't tell you the funny part? I about threw up in my lap when I found out how much they were going to pay me. $87,000 a year working for Shagalls in Virginia. Other departments have offered Lewis jobs, and after the way he describes his work environment, it sounds like he should have taken one of them. Shagalls. You know Shay, yeah. Working for USAA up in Virginia in Chesapeake. I almost vomited in my lap when I found out how much they were going to pay you. Who got the job? Who? Eric Lewis. Yeah. Eric Lewis. Really? Yes, not the same Eric Lewis you know. Eric Lewis got the job. So if you went on the move to Virginia? He picked up the phone and called me when he got the job and said, I just wanted to tell you thanks. I said, for what? He said, I heard you was looking into the job up here. I said, yeah. Was and Eric still working down there? Yeah. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, man, he said, you know, that's where I'm from. He said, I picked it up, man. I appreciate it. I said, man, it ain't no problem. Doing what? Said, Investigations for USAA insurance. And yeah. I said, how much? I said, I'm just curious. I said, how much? Because I had been told 60, yeah. 65. Yeah. I almost threw up. Well, you're not going to uh, take your family up to Virginia. For $87,000 a year? I've moved my family to Antarctica. Um, there's nothing too many Walmarts in Antarctica. Oh, yeah, but the price of living up there is a lot well, higher than here. It is. It was $1.2 million for the cheap price we could find in Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. And that's why we didn't take it. Mm -hmm. But that's why I didn't take it. But that was all that was right there. So, you well, know. I'm not trying to get y'all riled up. And well, I mean, it's, this I know this things get you pissed off because it's. It, and it was, you know. And I know you're tired of coming up in here, especially after all that Bravo crap. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking dogs, the Bravo. Oh, thing. yeah. So, I mean, just, no, 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 I'm not trying to get you, but you know, when it's brought to our attention, we have to ask. I don't understand. But yeah. you, here's my. Here's and you my know that we know that there's two sides to every, or three sides to every story. Yeah. You know, so exactly. that's why we want to get your side of things. Um, who said this? Who, who told you? Um, what's his face? It's Scotty. Just, it's Scotty just, complained. Who told me that Scotty complained? Yeah. I just assumed okay. that Scotty had complained because oh, I thought, they, okay. they were calling around. Okay. So I mean I just I figured I'm like, yeah, this dude's filed a complaint. And my assumption is yeah. that my assumption is that he filed a, was that he filed a complaint 
and I knew almost immediately that Stan Witten or Reagan Marlin had to be involved in it because they are the only people that I know that know that I know Gary Brown. So that's that was my assumption. Mm -hmm. So and and those are the only two people that I know of that took Scotty's uh, termination or resignation or whatever happened with him personally. Um, you know. So I, you know I don't know whatever man. <coughs> You know, I don't have shit to do with it. Yeah. So the only reason I'm, I'm gonna tell you was this truth. recent when somebody said that a uh, relay to you that he had made comments about how he was gonna take care of you and all this. Yeah, it's been recent. Was it a deputy that said this to you? I don't know if they were deputy at the time. Really. I mean, I, I don't believe me perfectly honest. Who, who was it? You know, we have to report everything direct to the yeah. sheriff. In a minute, we tell him he's going to be like, well, who was it? And then we're going to have to come back and ask you and find you again. Man, if you just give, if you, if you give me a minute and, and just let me be comfortable with it, I will tell you who it was. Will you give me that? Will you give me, will you give me about 15 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Just, if you yeah, give me 15 minutes, I'll tell you who it was. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to throw anybody yeah. under any buses until... Until all this shit. Well, they were just relaying the message to you, right? Is that what they had heard? Yeah. Okay. So no, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm just not. I mean, I'm, I'm you, and you know me. This is just you. And this is this is just us talking. Yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and, and browbeat anybody. You and I are friends. Yeah. Um, and I understand that he's gonna ask that question, and I will give you an answer to that question. Yeah. I will give you an answer to that question, but just give me, give me a minute. No. To make like that phone call first. I just don't. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're fine. So, um, that fucking pisses me off, man. More serious than that, but it just pisses me off. Um, you want to take a, we've been in here a part, are you done with that part? Man, I'm fine. I'm good. Okay, then I'm going to take a break, get some water or something like that. I had to go pee, because I was going to wait until the break, but good lord, uh, that coffee was going to be like Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of jacked up right now. I've had so much coffee this morning. And, and you know, we've been non-stop up in here since Friday with all that that went on. So, um, so just to summarize this part. Yeah, I'm just summarizing to make sure it's clear for me. We Everybody knows that you were trying and, and needed to go to ECHO for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk to the sheriff on the phone when he called you the second time yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he said give him until can, uh, the, the he said the, he said the 17th yeah. um, because that was the beginning of a new pay period yeah. and he said things will be taken care of then the, the new pay period when he talked to me the new pay period would have started on the following Monday okay. which would have been what the second or no the fourth or something like that and that's when you were going to the class. And that's no, 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 no. Okay, sorry. When the sheriff called me back, and we talked, and he said, the, on, at the, at the new, when the new pay period starts, I said, are you talking about Monday? And he said, no, the following, the following pay period, Monday. the okay. 17th. And okay. that's how we ended up with the 17th. Lewis doesn't seem bothered by the investigation and is willing to answer questions that might make him unpopular if they become known. Given that the people that have a problem with him are higher up on the food chain, his future in the department looks pretty grim, unless this investigation resolves anything. Okay. So that's where the 17 came from. And just for his words were that he, he just said everything will be taken care of. <clears throat> because at that point... That you needed or whatever. Yeah, whatever. It, it'll be taken care of, or, you know, get you where you need to be, something... Something to that effect. I don't know exactly. Yeah, he didn't what say you're going to start on Echo on the He did not tell me I was going to start on Echo on the 17th. No. He did not. Um, back to the Sergeant Lang issue. Okay. Um, and like I said, he was not the complainant by any means. Um, this came up during some other parts of this when we were asking about the whole other stuff. Um, what's the, did you, is there a deal between, or did you think there was some investigation going on or something 
or do you, I mean, we've already talked about how you feel and y'all deal, you and Sergeant Lane. There's no history, but y'all not going to exactly go have a beer together. Um, is there an issue with Dallas, Sergeant Gladstone? At all? Absolutely not. Not to my knowledge. Okay. I know absolutely nothing about Sergeant Glasson. Okay. I mean, he, that's, I mean, he's a new sergeant, and okay. that's all I know. Um, have you ever said anything about taking Sergeant Lane down and taking Dallas with him? Hell no. Bullshit. Fuck that. I didn't say anything like that. Okay. I never made any comment about taking anybody down. There about like when all this started. You mean the phys whole... physically or like? No, 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 no. Like in here. Hell no. Like if if something were to happen to where you go, now it makes or, sense. Or get get. That? Now it makes sense. I got a phone call the other day. Some dude who was running his mouth that I had been in OPS for two days writing statements on people. Who said that? Some kid on the fucking south end. I don't even know who it is. Okay. Now, you talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know. Now it's starting to make sense. Now I'm digging it. All right. Now I know where that came from now. Okay, go ahead. How, how, do, I, how do we find out who... who I'll was find out who it was. I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, I'll find there out. There was, in other words, if, if when everything was going on, like like we said, the, the issue with the write up about the car not being serviced, mm -hmm. all that crap, um, and you not knowing if you're going or staying or mm -hmm. all that. In the midst of that, um, I don't know if you thought something was under investigation in here or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like if something happens to me. I'll be sure and bring them down with me. Absolutely. Not not physically hurt them. I just I mean, mean I know what you're talking about. Absolutely. The way not. it was portrayed to us as if nah. you know, gotta make sure that No, nah, I never made that comment. I never said anything even remotely close to that. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. I said, uh, I told a guy one day, Sergeant Lane and Sergeant Gladson were talking to two kids about something that they had done on the north side of the county. And I told them both. I said when they came back and told me about it, what, what the conversation entailed, I told them, I said, listen, I, I don't agree with what they're telling you. I said, but you do what your sergeant tells you to do. This is my opinion, but I'm telling you, do what your sergeant tells you to do. I, matter of fact, it's been just the opposite. That's, and I know that you, this is the whole reason you've been frustrated, obviously, since you told us now that that was why you've been not happy around here. And this is the kind of crap you're talking about. And I understand. Yeah, this is kind of bullshit. <laughs> and just to, bullshit. just to clear. You know, we'll have to know. Just to clear the record, it, it was not Dallas. Dallas has no problem with you whatsoever on this earth. You know, the, he would hardly say a bad word about anybody in this whole world. I ain't got a problem with Dallas. <laughs> Dallas da I ain't got a problem with him. Richard, no. Matter of fact, Richard has just been. It was funny one morning because we were talking, and, and even though his, his personality and my personality aren't the same, and, and we don't necessarily get along, we, we've been to lunch together two or three different times. And I think Dallas is one that can get along with anybody. He's well, pretty, um, Richard and I have been to lunch together a couple of times, and we talk about everything under the sun. Now when, the, now, when it punches 29 minutes and 59 seconds, we're back on the clock, and that's, that's Richard. So be it. That's his personality. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have an issue with that. Um, and I've said that several times. I may not agree with what he says or does, but he's the sergeant. That's his business. Um, Although Lewis naturally feels some level of animosity, he believes that authority should be obeyed, even if you do not agree with them. People that hold this view usually either leave the workplace where there are high levels of conflict or go through official channels to resolve the matter. It was, uh, I, I, it's been, I called him one morning and I said, listen, I said, I'm going to have to go home early. I said, because the kids are sick. I said, Amy's sick. I said, I'm going to have to get home. She's got to go in and put sub plans in place. And she had to be at the school at like 6.30 to do that. So I had to leave at like 6.15. I went home and then mother arrangements were made. Somebody could watch the kids that morning, just briefly. 
So I picked up the phone and called him. I said, listen, man, I said, I don't need to go home this morning. It's covered. And he said, are you sure? He said, because if you need to go, you need to go. And I was shocked that he was like, so, yeah, take care of what you need to do. Well, they've all told us that during this, and, and to clear it for you, obviously you can't get specifics, but nobody on your ship had anything to do with this. Um, this came from up above. Like I said, this was something that Captain was handling. And once it was told to the higher-ups, they wanted us to handle it. So that's where it came from. Um, as far as a specific person that you Vanessa work with. Oh no. shit. But you know, when we have an investigation, we have to call people in and talk to them. Um, Vanessa, but, oh shit. Um, That's fucked up. Yeah. And I don't want to add to you. Obviously, I know I'm going to add it to it now because that's why you haven't been happy, obviously. But I knew that just the little things that Sergeant Lane was having to deal with as your sergeant, it was very out of character for you. That's why I, I talked to Nate and talked to Tina about it. And I said, that's not Will, something else is going on. <laughs> so. Man, that's some fucked up bullshit. Oh, well, um, you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I don't want you to go. Don't tell me I'm going away mad because you know that's. I know, <laughs> but that's going in one ear and out the other. You know what? You know how many times we have to call people in here and ask them some stuff, and they're like looking at us like we're freaking cross eyed. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. yeah. How, many, how many people but, come up in here and sit down with 15 fucking years' experience? And you got captains and everybody else looking down saying, well, you know what, we, we don't have enough to ask him, so you go ask him. Fuck that. Come ask me. I will tell you what happened. I have never sat in this room or any other room in this agency and lied to anybody about anything that has ever happened. And I'll be damned if I'm going to start now. The, the main thing that was brought to our attention initially was this whole... Uh, the Scotty thing first, and then the it's funny, how it's you funny. ended up getting almost transferred, but not really when there wasn't a personnel order and and all that. Um, so that's what came to us initially. We'll wait till the end of this investigation, and we'll see things clear. Then I'm like, whatever. So I need to play. This is fucked up. You know, it's, it's just it's just Laura's job to unscrew. I'm not mad at anybody in this room. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do. And, and I don't want you to be at, at Sergeant Lane. Sergeant Lane spoke to us because we had to call him in here to talk to him. Talk to because Sergeant his name, it, he was not the complainant. I don't talk to Sergeant no. Lane now. I'm not talking to him later on. I mean, it's just one of those things where I don't have to talk to him and he doesn't have to talk to me. Okay. So, I mean, you know, we're not. Man, this is bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. It's just an allegation. When it went all boiled down to it, and I know it sucks. Um, let's take a just a quick break. So take a break for me. Yeah, you may take a five break. We'll call. Who needs to call? Then we'll get you out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me go get a phone number call. Fuck, you're cool. You sure you're good? I heard from you. Please do. Please do. <laughs> This is kind of new to me. Um, I think I was kept in the dark a little bit just because you know our friends, which is kind of the way I like it now. Um, I agree. I guess if I'd have known about this before now, I'd probably have been fucked out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you cool with it? I know you're not. I know you're mad. And, uh, My dad was the one who told me about Ray and Molly and her fucking big skitter. Yeah. And, uh, I probably shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. 
and the other one is uh, his last name's Payne. I don't know what his first name is. Yeah. He made uh, the Kelman spot me being in here the other day. Lewis begins to give the investigators the names of people they will need to speak with, and hopefully this will help them to untangle the rumors from the truth. Mm -hmm. On, uh, <clears throat> maybe he made some comments about me being up in OPS writing statements on the, uh, on the Canterbury scene. Canterbury? Yeah, the home invasion. We're going to shot the shoulder. Oh. A couple of days ago. I guess oh. it was on Friday. Yeah. Um, he made a comment down there in front of uh, a couple of people, so you probably pull whoever was down there to find out. Why would he even say that? I don't know, dude. I don't even know this guy. If he walked in front of me right now, I would have no idea who he was. I mean, not a clue who he was. And see, I, I didn't think anything about it. So one of his buddies uh, called me the other day, and he was like, uh, he said something about, something about him, and I said, uh, so you know that kid? He said, yeah. I said, where, where? I said, who is he? And I said, man, I said, this guy's running his mouth about me, dude. I said, I said you, you tell him, if he, if he wants to run his mouth about me, I said, he needs to come talk to me first. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. I mean, you know, he, he, I mean, if he wants to know something, he needs to come talk to me. Yeah. But. That's a well, like I say, I mean, we. We got asked the questions. This is it, it's uncomfortable. I don't like it, but I can deal with. It. You know, we can deal with it, and then just get all get all this past us. It's, it's as uncomfortable as it gets. Um, one last complaint came in with all this. Well, I was downstairs. No, but I, I'm sure my phone's gonna be ringing after all this is. I'm just I'm just messing. Cause you know, bad things come in threes. Um, and I told them, well, initially it came in from Charlie Shift, and they asked us to handle it because they didn't want, and again, I'm just, I just want to put the cookies on the bottom shelf. I don't keep anything from you. Um, number one, because it's not the right thing to, but number two, you're my friend, and, and I just wouldn't do that to you. Um, they asked us to handle it just because they didn't want to make it seem like they were piling on stuff on you. Because it's just something that came at a bad time, and I said, I said, listen, Will's a friend of mine. I'll ask him. Just man, man, ask him. Um, there were some deputies that came forward on Charlie Shift, and they were making comments about. Apparently, it involved Sherry Lada, um, and now whenever they said Sherry Lada, I kicked. Laura out of the picture mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want there to be any kind of conflict. But now Sherry's not the one who came forward with this complaint. If it's a, I'm going to tell you right now, if it's a comment that I made about Sherry Lida, yeah, it's probably nothing that I haven't said to her or talked yeah. to her about because I love her with all my heart. Oh, yeah, no, 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 uh, no, it's not a comment or anything. Apparently she had been called to a scene to pat down a female you had robbed later on um, and then apparently gave her a kiss on the cheek on the scene. Sherry? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, some other deputies came forward uh -huh. um, and they felt it was a little bit unprofessional. Okay. Well, then so, I'll, I'll, I'll flat out tell you, yeah, that's, yeah. that probably happened. And, and, and that's, you know. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and I'll, take, I'll take that one yeah. all day long because absolutely. I'll Even if this was platonic and consensual, physical affection like this isn't appropriate for the workplace especially when it involves a crime scene. Lewis has no problem admitting that this happened. And, and I think the way it was perceived is because only because it, you know, like, like whenever you, I'm, I was getting ready to say something weird, um, like Tina, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've seen you do it to her. It's, mm -hmm. it's inside, it's, yeah. it's, with, yeah. it's with friends. Absolutely. Um, shoot, um, you know, punching buddies and stuff like that. Yeah. It's inside. Yeah. We've done it, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. but they they thought it was unprofessional you outside. You know what? And that, that may very well be that, that and I'm not going to tell you that I yeah. did or did not do it. Yeah. But I can tell you ahead of time, it pro I probably did. Well, and, and like I said, I didn't want you to think that Sherry came up here and stir and, and stirred this up. It, it did yeah. not. And and Tina had to talk to Sherry, yeah. and, and Sherry made that very clear. Yeah. You know. She, you know. I just, didn't, I just didn't want you to turn around and say, oh, Sherry wouldn't complain on me. That's not the case. I know, I know that Sherry wouldn't complain on me. I mean, if Sherry had a complaint with me, she would tell me in my face. Yeah. 
Um, and that's and Sherry's like that. Yeah, uh, Sherry is. Uh, no, I, I can tell you with probably. I mean, I don't remember doing. I don't remember doing that. Yeah. I don't remember where it was. Yeah. But I can tell you it probably happened. <clears throat> because I, I do that with her. I've known Sherry. I knew Sherry before she worked here. Yeah. Um, she used to run a pottery shop down in Pickens, in Easley. Mm-hmm. And uh, my wife used to go down there and yeah. make pottery. And I had met her before. So we were di- when she was in dispatch on yeah. Delta, we all were just like, I mean, it was just like a big family. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still do it to Ann. Like, yeah. Ann, when I see Ann Smith, I'll go down and give Ann a kiss yeah. on the cheek. I, I mean, it's not, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see, uh, I could definitely see me doing that. No okay. doubt about it. All right, we are done. Um, you gonna read reps from one check for this? Okay. Um, well, before you go home, you gotta get a statement from me on it all. Um, we can just wrap up all three in one statement. I know it's gonna take a while to type it up. Um, if you decide to stay the rest of the day, why don't you grab some? Lunch or something before you start to type this thing up. Maybe done it. Okay. Um, just address the whole deal with Mendenhall. Um, address the whole transfer deal with the cars and all that stuff. And then address the deal with um, Sherry. And like I said, I mean, if, if you're gonna, what about the one with Lane and, and uh, well, you know, yeah, throw that in there as well. Um, about the allegation that you had said that about, you know, in, in front of another deputy. Uh, throw that in there that you didn't say that. Because that was, that was the allegation that came forward. And I, and I get, I'm hearing it secondhand through the investigators. See, you know, I think what's funny as shit is that nobody on Charlie Platini's complaining about it. Everybody on Charlie Platini seems to be talking about shit they don't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is right here. Well, I know okay. that I know that I got uh, I know that there was a whole lot of things uh, that were said to uh, said to me that obviously apparently weren't true. Yeah. So, and I know that this is bullshit. Man, Which I, part? You know, like, dude, I'm thinking instead of giving a statement. Yeah. I'm thinking let's walk out. It's all bullshit. Yeah. And I, you know what? No, that's not true. I'm going to give a statement, yeah. and I'm going to see the investigation through. Yeah. But uh, I was gonna say just I'll, I'll, I'll say the investigation it. through, and yeah. I fuck that. I'm not thinking about shit anymore. If they yeah. look, talk to me, mm-hmm. and they want to treat me like a fucking redhead and stepchild, mm-hmm. no, that's fine. I'm done. I mean, it is the thing about my biggest problem is if, if I, I'm just I'm almost 100 percent sure that if you sit down and talk to one person about the entire thing, mm-hmm. and everybody sits down in the room together and figures it out, mm-hmm. then None of the shit. And and that's kind of what Laura's job is. That's my job to supervise it, but to to get all the facts together. You know, because you're right. You know, you tell one person something, and then by the time they repeat it three times, it's 180 degrees in the other direction. I can tell you, everybody, everybody probably is is saying, "Oh yeah, he said he was going to Echo, but I never did." Yeah. Because everybody assumed that I was going there. I've had guys from Echo Platoon ask me, "What are you coming to Echo?" And you know what? It's not even worth it. It's just not even worth it. I'm gonna tell you. I'll tell you this: uh, all this is a result of problem. Period. Ain't no doubt in my mind. Really? One way or another. All this is a result of what and, and 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 this is this is partly my fault. My knowledge of it is actually pretty limited. Um, just because as soon as we knew about it, I'd ask Laura, "How you doing? Can I do anything? Can I do anything to help you out?" No. Um, so so my knowledge of it is limited. If I, I don't know of anything, if it ties it up with Bravo, I'm not aware of anything that ties it up with Bravo. Well, I mean, Scotty Mendenhall thing. Well, no, Scotty Mendenhall, yeah. I mean, that's point four. I mean, and then the, the thing about Rick, who who fuck would make a comment like that? Rich. Who would who would make a fucking comment about taking down two sergeants? The bunch of people that you don't even know. I didn't even talk to these guys for two weeks and yeah. got complained on because I didn't talk to them. You know about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the first I've heard about that. I got complained on because I didn't talk to them. That 
But I don't talk to anybody I don't know. Yeah. But I was there. Yeah. And I worked. Man, this is fucking bullshit. Well, and it's, it's up to us just to clean it up. Yeah, let me call me. I'm going to call the lieutenant and tell him I just find something. Hope when you'll have the shit cleared up. Hopefully, within the next few days. So, feasibly. Feasibly. You know, we type it up, it gets sent to the sheriff. You know, when the sheriff decides to make a call on it, the sheriff decides to make a call on it. You know, Man, this is I don't know. I'm not going to sit around just so somebody can fucking think about something long enough yeah. to determine, well, I'm going to believe what I want to believe. Well, you know, give him time. Give him this, give him this time. You know, and like Lieutenant said, you know, he's got an open door policy. Call him. Fuck that. You know? Dude, dude, dude. If I walk into his office today mm-hmm. and say, your captain mm-hmm. did this and you said this to me and this is what happened, how's yeah. that going to look? Well, he's yeah. directly involved in it. You know, and, and like I said, you know, what we're doing is we're just compiling it right now. I'm just compiling it so that there's a there's a clear picture. It's a clear picture. But before before you take off, if you end up taking off today, you gotta get that. Gotta the investigator wraps up the interview, and all that is left is to fill out paperwork. Will Lewis was able to keep his job and later became sheriff. Lewis's former assistant, Savannah Neighbors, claimed he sexually harassed and assaulted her during a business trip to Charlotte, North Carolina in March 2017. She sued and was ultimately awarded a settlement of nearly $200,000. Lewis admitted that there was a sexual relationship but claims it was consensual. Lewis was found guilty of one count of misconduct of a public officer in October 2019. He was found not guilty of common law misconduct in office. He was indicted on a dozen other charges alleging additional aspects of misconduct in office, obstruction of justice, perjury, and misconduct of a public officer, but those charges were later dismissed. On October 13, 2021, Will Lewis was sentenced to one year in prison.